<laughs> Is it working? Um. Okay, so we are going to be talking about um, plant UML in this video. I'm not sure if this is actually working right now. Okay. Let me just let a couple more folks get in here and check to make sure everything is working properly. Um, the reason I'm being so careful is last time or a couple times ago, it was like a double stream that got set up for some weird reason when I was doing this. I wanna make sure that's not happening. Okay, so um, how's it going everyone? Hope everyone's staying safe and all that stuff. And staying home and washing your hands. Don't forget to do that. So what I kind of want to just go over, this will probably be a pretty uh, short video or short live stream. Uh, hey, Glenn, how's it going? Uh, I just want to talk about Plant UML. Uh, and I'm actually going to have a video coming out on this. And um, so I don't know if you want to wait for that or watch this, but whatever. But if you haven't heard about this tool, um, super, super useful tool. Um, it basically allows you to define a whole bunch of these different diagrams as text. Um, so for instance, if we click into one of these guys, you can see here, this image here on the left, the sequence diagram is built just using raw text. Uh, and you can change whatever you want. Actually, this, this is not a live editor, but uh, if this was a live editor, you can uh, change this text and it would automatically reflect in the diagram over here. Now, the reason I, I love this is that um, when, when I used to draw sequence diagrams, I used to use a tool like draw.io. I'm sure you guys know about this or uh, Visio or OmniGraphle or whatever uh, people are using these days. But I would draw out a component diagram, like something like, not component, I think it's like a flow diagram, they call it. Maybe it's here, yeah maybe something that kind of looks like this, like things are connected and there's descriptions here between arrows and stuff. And I used to make this and draw IO and it took forever, right? And then someone would come along and they would say, oh, this whole thing is gonna change. And then you spend like half an hour, an hour, like getting rid of this, making sure all the arrows are connected, the vertices are set up, the things are saying the right thing. And I was just sick of it. And I was like, this is crazy. So. Uh, a few days later, or I don't know when later, at some point later, um, a guy I was working with, we were talking about something. He's like, oh, why don't I just kind of show you real quick? Let's just write it up. Um, we were talking about like how a, a system was going to be built. And he's like, yeah, let's just use this cool tool and I'll, I'll draw it out so we can visualize it. And he literally just put this up in front of me and it took him like, I don't know, 30 seconds to draw out this awesome flow diagram that kind of looked like something like this. So you can build some pretty sweet things. Um, using this and I don't know if it has the syntax here, like it, it looks complicated here, but once you start doing it, um, like they're doing a bunch of fancy things too. Like they're drawing boxes and stuff. Like that's not what most people do. This isn't very like stylistic, but for me, it's very, very simple. It's just like bubbles with arrows pointing to other bubbles. And effectively that's what I use it for. Um, so let's just like take a look at some of the like examples here. So like, okay, so this is kind of what I would build something close to this. This is a pretty complicated, but you can define like different pieces here, different components. So app application, you can put notes over certain relationships, um, you know, applications talking to content manager, and then this happens. And then you have this if statement basically. So if the item is found, you return the item. If it's not found, then you create it one and do a whole bunch of super fancy things in this sequence diagram. That one was actually pretty good. Um, oh, the other the other thing that I really, really like it for is state diagrams. 
And so I've used this, I guess it really depends what you're working on at the time because basically whatever I'm working on, I make this thing work because it's such an awesome tool. Um, so for state machines, like this looks like a, mm, it's not a good example. Maybe this. Yeah, that was all right. Um, it's a good state. Okay, yeah. So like if elevators and stopped or moving and then, you know, all these relationships that are going on between these. Uh, so it lets you kind of do this. Uh, maybe the, the style isn't very good here. This one looks better for style. Um, so like line parsing states for HTTP. Um, so it helps you kind of put together a visual representation of what the flow of things are going to look like, uh, especially when you're, mod when you're modeling states of things. Um, so super cool for that. Let's see if they have any more examples. And I'll put this in the chat. So if anyone wants to go to this website, um, real world plant UML, world, real world plant um, So if you want to check it out, you can come and play with it and see what's going on. Um, the other useful thing is for class diagrams. So defining like package relationships and um, types and all that. Um, so this guy actually did something. Oh, okay, so like entity relationship diagrams. Um, so I didn't even know you can do this actually. I, like I'm constantly learning about this. So it just goes to show you that um, there's a lot you can do. Yeah, this is kind of like what I built. So you can say, if you have hierarchies or parent-child relationships, you can kind of wire them up here. Um, let's just kind of like take a look actually because well, this is pretty cool for like interfaces and all that. This is a this is a pretty good template. I would probably steal this and use this for something. <laughs> um, that's usually how I start, by the way. If you're wondering, like, how do you how do you start with this? Like, you basically find one that looks like what you want and then modify it, and then you like kind of build it out, right? Um, so oh, this one's pretty cool. Yeah, so like you can add certain sections here. This doesn't look very complicated in terms of the, not code, but text here, right? Seems pretty intuitive. Um, let's go to their website now. I think I'm done talking about that. Um, so the cool part about this is that you can either download it. So you can download the jar and run it from your machine. Uh, it uses something called GraphViz. If those of you, some of you may know what that is if you're old school, but um, uses an engine called GraphViz to, to do the rendering. Um, you can also get like plugins and I think it's got like a, a browser integration. Like yeah, for like jQuery. So that's pretty cool. You can integrate it into your website pretty easily. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of how you can get started. The way I typically use it is I use a like an, an online editor and then I just save the text to my notepad so that I can, um, you know, pull it up later and just copy it in. The thing that we have at work, it like it saves for you. So it's like stateful. Uh, so it's pretty convenient. Um, so what was I gonna show you guys? Oh, wow, deployment, I think that's new. What are they doing here? Uh, oh, wow, okay. Oh, another thing that I just remembered was that like you can, you can import, people build um, like symbology packs so you can download icon packs for this that have like AWS pieces or like Microsoft Azure or whatever you're using. Uh, so they got all the icons for you to use. Again, your image may look a little bit more complicated, but you know, uh, you can't have it all. But this is kind of a new feature that they added for deployments. Oh, it's kind of, kind of cool here. So like you're deploying this package to all these different kind of things. Um, wow, this is complicated. <laughs> what else do we got? Um, uh, wireframes. Wait, what is, what is that? Archimate. I don't know what this is. Okay. I guess some people can find this useful in a way. Ooh. Oh, these are all the different shapes that you can use. Cool. 
so like I said, like things, people are constantly updating it. Um, what do I want to do? Okay, I want to show you like just a basic example uh, for sequence diagrams, like how you can get started. So I think this website has a thing where you can like edit in line, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I need to go to home. Yeah, there it is. So you can edit over here, uh, or like this is the visual representation, you can edit it, so let's get rid of that. Um, let's just say like we have uh, participant foo, uh, participant bar, and participant baz. Um, so you can say like foo goes to bar, um, hello bar, right? And then maybe um, bar says to Baz, um, hi, Baz, foo says hello. Um, so you can see like how the, how the relationships work. I think you can actually, yeah, so you can like change the styles and I think you know, like they have a thing where if you put that in, I, I can't remember the syntax exactly. Maybe it's like, no, but it gives you a nice little um, warning thing of like where your error is. Um, so you can kind of make sure you're doing it right. Um, and then you can do things like, I don't know, you can like activate a block. So say if, if bar was gonna do multiple things, so you can say like activate bar um, and then deactivate bar. So you create these little blocks here and that's useful if you're, if you're doing multiple things. So like bar will maybe calls, um, let's make this single arrows. Maybe bar calls Baz twice. Hello again, right? Um, so it's it's good to show like multiple interactions all in a sequence that are happening happening serially, um, and then these can like return back. So you, what you would do is say like Baz back to bar, hello, and Baz back to bar again. Hello again. Oops, Baz back to bar. No, Baz back to bar. Right, okay. Um, and then you can also do like if statements too, which are pretty cool. Uh, let's see if I remember the syntax. I think it's like alt and then end alt. Oh, yes. Um, so you can put something here like a condition, right? Like if hungry, right? And then um, you can do an else, I think. Not hungry, right? So you can d define relationships that exist just in the context of the alt. Um, so this one doesn't really make much sense, but you can get the idea. Um, Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention was that these are all like HTML things too. And there's a way that you can do this so that you you change the style of this um, so that it, it, you know, whatever HTML style you want. Um, does this work? Note above foo. Hello. Notes. There's a way to do notes too, so that you can have like a little text pop up like right here, but I can't remember exactly what the syntax is. You'd have to like look it up. I usually don't memorize most of these things. I'm just kind of like going through as I go through them. But um, yeah, it's useful in that way. Oh, another thing that I use a lot is like the dot, dot, dots. You can, you can section off this thing into two separate diagrams if you want. I usually use the dot, dot, dot because it's the fastest. Or like when you want to show that time goes by, so like time goes by or like ooh, five minutes later. So you get, you separate it out here and then you can just say, you know, foo goes to bar, I'm back. And bar says to foo, go away, foo. Um, so that's a neat little part of it. What else do I use? Um, oh, title, title, obviously. Title, uh, foo, bar, and baz. Um, auto number, I think, is something. Auto number on. Is that the syntax? 
auto increment maybe no there's a syntax there I can't remember it's just called automatic numbering um, another cool one is that you can like define actors that look like other symbols like actor user and you get the, the little guy there there's other ones that you can use for um, other shapes but I just can't remember what those are right now um, you can do loops uh, I think it's just loop and then end loop yeah um, so user can say to uh, foo stop hitting yourself right over and over and over until some condition is met I think you can also say until x is met and then you end the loop there um, so it kind of shows you um, how this works. And for those of you that are just joining, um, that was about all I wanted to show in this kind of little demo here. Um, but it shows you what you can do with like sequence diagrams, which I use the most. Uh, so for those of you just joining, we're talking about a tool called Plant UML over there. And it um, allows you to kind of create sequence diagrams, create all these tools very easily. Um, and you see here, if you're on this real the real world plant uml.com website you can see what people have built with it uh, so it's got sequence diagrams use cases class diagrams activities components and states um, so like i said i'm going to come out with a video on this probably in the next few weeks reiterating reiterating what i talked about here um, but i just kind of wanted to show you guys what i figured out so far um, and you can see here there's all sorts of things people have done with super impressive styles uh, so I'll let you explore this on your own. Um, but this was going to be a short stream. That's all I wanted to show you guys. Um, hope you guys learned something from this. And yeah, hope you have a good evening. All right, see you guys.